Alright, um, <clears throat> this video is going to be um, about La Santísima Muerte. Um, I have some statues right here. And I'm just going to go in um, a little bit into her so you guys have kind of an understanding of where I'm coming from. Um, I work with her a lot and she is my patron. Um, and I'm going to explain some things about her. Um, first, I want to explain that there are three aspects of her and three traditional colors. There is the, the red one. Um, this, this one right here isn't a traditional color. Um, but there's red, black, and white. Um, the red one is the one I work with the most um, because uh, she's the one who appeared to me first. But they're all, they're all the same person. They're just different aspects of the same goddess. Um, uh, she is a Mayan goddess of death that has been synchronized kind of with a almost like a grim reaper but there are a lot of myths behind that. Um, one of the myths is that she's actually the Virgin Mary but dead. Um, there's another myth that says that she's um, she was she was alive once and she was a nun and she committed suicide after her husband um, committed adultery. Um, now, her three colors, are, like I said, are red, black, and white. Um, her red aspect is used primarily for love and domination, and um, is really forceful. Her black um, is probably the most fierce, and I, I don't have a black statue because that energy is so fierce and you really have to be ready for that and I'm not ready yet but um, her black aspect is used for protection and it's used for black magic and it's used for hexing and unhexing cursing and, and you know all that her white one is actually her primary color and I have my white one over here, but I'm actually doing something with it. But her white one is used for also protection, but it's also used for um, cleansing and purification, and it's her most um, motherly uh, aspect. Now, the she has a triple goddess aspect, and those are the three colors. Now, the red one is considered to be the the maiden. The white one is the mother, and the black one is the crone. And the black one harnesses the powers harnesses the powers of the unknown, and um, uh, the darker side of magic and in spirituality. Um, she's also known as Nina Blanca, um, but her Mayan original Mayan name is uh, Mik. De Quasiqua or something. It, it's really hard to pronounce. And when you look at it and when you read it, it you it, it's just impossible to understand what you're saying because it's such a long Maya name, but it's Mik de Quasi Mik de Quasiqua. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um now she is um venerated in Mexico and she originated in the slums of Mexico and the jails of Mexico. And um she is considered a saint, but she is not recognized by the Catholic Church. And the reason for that is because um, the Catholic Church doesn't want to recognize her as um, a saint because she embodies death. And they say, they, the, the Catholic Church says that um, death came to Jesus, but Jesus was resur resurrected and therefore death was defeated. Um, a lot of people turn to her because, um, number one, she doesn't turn her arms away from anyone. And she accepts everybody because the only fair thing in life, in this world, is death. Death comes to everybody. Death comes to the rich, the poor, the strong, the weak, um, everybody. And, um, she doesn't have any kind of initiatory system you don't have to go through any kind of process to be initiated into her, into um, following her or her, her because when you're born that's your initiation because she embodies death and she also embodies rebirth 
um, let me see. She has a very serious energy about her, so if you work with her, just take that into consideration. Just like working with any other deity. Um, now, there are a lot of misconceptions that she's jealous, and if you turn your back on her, she will harm you, and, and that's not true. Um, but I will say, you want, if you come to her, you need to come to her just like any other deity with respect and um, treat her with respect and don't just come to her when you want something. If you're going to seriously work with her, you have to um, respect her and you have to pay, uh, you have to give her, you know, give offerings and, and form a relationship with her as if she, you know, like you would your mother. Now, um, there's also a misconception that um, you can't have all of the the statues or the aspects together because they will taint each other, and you can't do that because they're all the same entities. So you can't taint what's you just can't. If that makes sense. Um, what else? I'm looking at my notes. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of negative connotations um, put on her because she, because um, generally of the people who work with her. Now the people who work with her are witches, curanderos, um, baleros, brujas, what else, um, and and santeras. They all work with her in different ways. But the reason why there's a lot of negative connotations on her is because of the people that come to her are also um, um, homosexuals, prostitutes, drug dealers, criminals, um, murderers, and the reason why these people come to her is because, like I said, she doesn't turn her arms away from every from anybody, and the Catholic Church has already shunned those people away. So sometimes people can't escape the lifestyle that has been created for them, so they find solace and they seek. Um, um, acceptance in her. Now, there's a lot of symbolism and a lot of um, meaning behind what she holds and what's around her. Like the scythe represents um, uh, what is used to cut the thread of life to end your life. Just like uh, Anubis in the scales or um, the three fates and cutting the threads. Um, she has uh, a globe in her hand to represent, you know, her, you know, accepting the world and and that. And I might uh, have to do this in two parts because I might run out of time. Um, also, uh, she also holds a crystal ball, which means she can see into the past, the present, and the future. Um, there is an L sometimes in her statues, which is the creature of the witch or the lechusa, and um, what the what is. That is used to send out spells. The, the creature, the owl, sends out magic for the witch, and she is the creature of the witch. And um, Santa Muerte is uh, used a lot by witches in Mexico, and not just Mexico, but like in the United States too. Um, let me see. Offerings. Okay, offerings include tequila, uh, water, cups, clean cups of water, cigarettes. Um, roses, coconuts, chocolates, and uncooked rice. And, um, what else? Always cherish each day with your loved ones because you never know when they're going to pass and, um, when she'll come for them. So, that, she's a reminder of that. Um, Hopefully I covered the basics, but I'll do more videos on her um, a little later. I'm also going to do a video on the In Tranquil Spirit, or en El Tranquilo. Um, I want to do some more on, you know, true Mexican brujería or witchcraft. So I'll get more into that, but this is just a video on her. And um, I will talk to you guys later.